All right then gang, so in order to work with GraphQL on the front end and be able to make GraphQL queries to our server, we'll need to use what's known as a GraphQL client. So the GraphQL client we'll be using is called Apollo. So much like when we're making HTTP requests to RESTful APIs, we could use a front end library like Axios or even jQuery to help us make those requests. When it comes to GraphQL, in order to make queries to the server, we'll need to use a GraphQL client, Apollo. And it doesn't matter that we're using React on the front end here. It could be Vue.js or Angular instead. We'd still need a GraphQL client to help us make those queries from the front end app to the GraphQL server. So in our React app here, we'll be creating queries much like we did in Graphical before, and then feeding them through the GraphQL client, Apollo, which will send the request to the server. The server is then going to respond, feed the data back to our GraphQL client, Apollo, which will then pass it back into our React application. So you can think of the GraphQL client as the thing that's in charge of the passage of data between the front end and the server, right? Like a data pack horse or something. Now, there's a few different clients we can use. Like I said, the one we're going to use is called Apollo Client, which is very widely used and quite well documented as well. So then let's take a look at the Apollo website to see how we can set it up inside our React app. All right then, so I'm here on the Apollo GraphQL website and this is kind of like a quick start installation guide. So I'm gonna leave this link down below for you to check out. But essentially this is how we get started with Apollo and React. Now we have to install a few different things here, right? And there's two different options. We can either do npm install Apollo client plus all of this other different stuff as well and save those. Or we can do npm install Apollo boost, which includes several different packages we're going to need and bundles them together, including the Apollo client we just talked about. And it also wants us to install React Apollo, which is kind of like a glue layer to bind Apollo with React and also GraphQL, which is the JavaScript implementation of GraphQL. So those three things right there. This is the option we're going to do. So I'm just going to copy that dude and open up my console and I'm going to cancel out of this process for now. Press yep and I'll paste this in. So I'm going to install those three packages right here. Okay, so now we have those installed, we can go ahead and start setting up Apollo in our React application. So let's head over now to the code and open up our roots component right here, app.js. And the first thing we're going to do is up here, import Apollo client, which we just installed from Apollo Boost, right? Remember, Apollo Boost was that package that bundles certain different things that we need together. And one of those things is the Apollo client, okay? So we're importing that first of all, and we need to now set up our um, Apollo client. So in fact, we'll do that below components down here. So a little comment, and I'll say Apollo client setup, all right? So let's create a constant and call this client and set this equal to a new Apollo client like so. And this Apollo client is going to take some options. One of those is a URI. So this is going to be the uh, endpoint that we're making requests or queries to. Okay, remember we set that up in the first half of this series and it was localhost 4000 forward slash GraphQL. That was the supercharged endpoint that handles all of our GraphQL queries. So let's pass that in here. So HTTP double dot forward slash localhost and it was colon 4000 forward slash graph ql like so okay so now that's pretty much it we've set up our apollo client now apollo knows that we're going to be making requests to this endpoint from our application all right but we also need to do one more thing inside this app.js file to set up apollo and that thing is first of all to import the apollo provider from, oops, React hyphen Apollo. All right, so React Apollo is the thing that's kind of binding Apollo to React. It helps React understand Apollo and what it's doing, right? And we need the Apollo, not prover, <laughs> the Apollo provider to wrap our application and inject whatever 
data we receive from the server into our application, right? So the way we do this is by surrounding all of our template right here with a tag, and this tag is gonna be the Apollo provider tag. So Apollo, like so, provider, and then we need to say what client this is gonna be using, and it's gonna be this one right here that we just created. So we can just copy and paste that down here like so. But we have to output it, not in quotations, but dynamically using these little curly braces. This is how we dynamically output data in a React component, right? So let's place that in there and then close this off. We need to also put a closing tag at the end. So close that Apollo tag, uh, Apollo provider tag, if I can spell it. All right, Apollo provider, like so. And we're just gonna scoot this up a little bit just to get the indentation roughly right. Okay, that'll do, whatever. So now we have our Apollo client created, all right? We're registering that on the front end here to say we're making requests to this endpoint from this application. Then what we're doing is importing the Apollo provider from React Apollo, which is surrounding our entire app here, right? And that is what enables us to get the data from this endpoint and inject it into whatever is inside the Apollo provider, okay? So it's taking the data from Apollo when it receives it from the server and injecting it into our application, right? So we can use it inside here. So there we go. Now we have Apollo set up in our application on the front end in React. In the next tutorial, let's move on and start to actually create these queries from the front end.